Hey guys, Rob from Reduce Tech here, and I thought I'd give you a bit more insight into our Mastering in the Box with Live 9 course, to help you understand what's included and how this benefits you. Mastering is an area that most producers could do with knowing a bit more about. Not just so you can create your own mastered tracks more easily, although this is obviously a big plus, but also so you understand what the mastering engineer is looking for, which in turn helps to improve your mixing skills. Although it's pretty amazing how much can be done at the mastering stage to transform a track, there's no way of fixing problems in the mix, which is something that sometimes crops up. Here's the template session from the course then, which has a particular track arrangement and configuration that allows you to instantly import your own track, as well as two reference tracks, which are of a similar style, that can be played alongside your track for an immediate visual and oral guide to the kind of sound you're trying to achieve. Hidden keys on the keyboard solos the reference tracks to make it quick and easy to do this. All tracks pass through a metering channel, which has live spectrum analyzer, utility gain, and a max for live RMS meter. The first two being included in the standard live effects library, and the last one being a free download. On the course, Nick explains how all these effects work, and what you're looking for when mastering, and also shows you the most suitable modes to put them in. So if I play my track now, I can see precisely what's going on in terms of loudness across the frequency range on the enlarged spectrum display here. The track's fairly well balanced across the frequency range, but is a bit fuzzy and lacking in distinction. Honestly, it's not the best mix I've done of late, and that's more due to the choice of parts than the mix down, but I'm interested to see how much of this I can rectify by mastering it. The floating RMS meter here is an indication of the dynamic range of the signal, and also shows the mono and stereo components of the mix, which is an area that's crucial when mastering. Having the metering on a separate track like this means you can instantly select the track at any point when you want the analyzer to pop up. Throughout the course, Nick shows how to build certain mastering racks, which are combinations of Live's effects placed into an audio effects rack in order to perform certain tasks. If I look in the browser here, you can see everything you get, which is eight racks in total. That's two exciters, one Aphex style and one three band, both for adding excitement or more harmonic interest to a track. One bass maximizer, which is for maximizing the bass on small speaker systems. A stereo widener. Three mid side effects, which I found really interesting to play with. And then a rack that has all of these racks and other effects loaded in, following the standard mastering sequence that Nick typically recommends. All of these racks come with the shorter Building Custom Mastering Weapons course which is a small portion of the eight hours of tutorials on the complete course. So this is the full mastering effects rack here, which has two EQs, one surgical and one tonal, three compressors, which are a multiband, and then the regular compressor and glue compressor, five of the previously mentioned racks, a mid-side compressor and EQ, a widener, and the two exciters. And then finally a limiter. The idea is that you can try out different combinations of these effects in the different ways shown on the course to find a chain that works best for your track. For example, here are two different racks that I tweaked in an attempt to master this track. In the first rack, I applied EQ much more gently and didn't alter the spectral shape of the track too drastically. So the sound is bigger and louder, but not too different from the pre-master. The second rack is a bit more experimental. I've played with the equalization a lot more, both with regular EQs and also the mid-side EQ. Plus, I've added the three-band exciter, which I found really transforms a track, even when used quite gently. You can hear what a big difference we get with this rack. And you can also see the difference on the analyzer, with there being more level right at the bottom, and a bit of a dip in the low mids area too. So you can hear how much you can do with these racks, and the difference you can make depending on how you use the various tools provided. One thing I found really interesting on the course, and something I should definitely pay more attention to generally, is mid-side processing. It's really important to focus on the mono and stereo elements in order to both solidify and also enlarge your mix. I've added the mid-side processing rack to the end of the mastering chain here. This rack allows you to easily listen to and process the stereo and mono parts of your mix separately. 
If I solo the sides for example, then turn off two of the stereo effects in my mastering rack, those being the widener and the mid-side EQ, then you can hear the difference they make to the sides when I turn them back on. They really help spread the mix wider and also make sure the relevant frequencies are either at the sides or remaining central. Like I said earlier, this highlighted how I wasn't paying enough attention to stereo effects on certain sounds in my mix. And this is something I need to remember to look at more again, in order to achieve a bigger sound whilst mixing. As you can see, there's a lot that can be done when mastering, but ultimately you have less control than you do at the mixing stage of course, in the same way that you have more control when processing individual drums than you do when processing all of your drums together. So this has given you a bit more insight into the skills and presets that you'll gain from the Mastering in the Box in Live 9 course, which I found to be really useful. Not only to see a professional mastering engineer's perspective, but also to see just how much is possible in terms of achieving a professionally mastered sound using only Live 9's devices. Go to the Music Courses site or the all new Live Courses site for more info about the course. Well,